Welcome back, Goblin. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how to play the Three Roach versus Terran in 2021. While I will be going over the basic build and timings for this, what I really wanted to make sure to go over as well are the different branches and paths that this build can take, uh, depending on the things that you scout or maybe how you're feeling as a player, what you're confident with with playing. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel and check me out live on Twitch where I'll be streaming StarCraft 2 almost every single day of the week. And a big thank you to all of the subscribers who's made this video possible by reaching that sub goal. Really appreciate you guys and look forward to doing the next one. But uh, so if you guys didn't know, we hit a sub goal. So we hit 200 subscriptions and I said as a result of that, the goal for that was to go um, and make the Three Roach Guide. So the Three Roaches, if you're not familiar with it, it's the, it's the way that I play versus Terran. It's basically, you start with a very early spawning pool, you make Three Roaches, which is why it's called the Guide. Um, and from that point, you just put on constant pressure and harassment. You eventually tech switch it to Mutas or something else. There's a lot of different possibilities um, depending on what you want to go for. And you basically keep the Terran on the back foot for the whole game. And usually your killer move is going to be pushing across the map with like a 1-1 one, one Roach Ravager timing. So the crisper and faster you can get to that, the more success you're going to have with this build. But what I really wanted to try to demonstrate and explain uh, is all the different kind of variations that you can do. Because uh, the 3 Roach offers quite a lot of different what I like to call branches where depending on what you scout <clears throat> and what you like to play as a zerg player you can go for a lot of different different routes you can go for a lot of different things uh so that's what i wanted to try to focus on with this video um the what i would call the standard three roach <clears throat> will be against somebody who goes like two one one so i'll load up a replay here this is a replay that's actually versus um Dolan. So Dolan at the time, he was 5,500. I think he may be a little bit down in MMR at the time. But um, I think I was around 4,700 at this point. This is on an old patch, so it'll take a second for it to register, but it should come up here in a second. There we go. It's still light shade. It's just an old patch, so it doesn't quite register the same. But uh, you'll see in this game, he likes to go for a bio response against this, and I'll show you what I got, what I like to do while going over the build in general. So the build itself is a 17 pool, 18 hatch, 17 gas, and then a 17 roach horn. So I'll show you guys that now. We go for the overlord, we go two drones. So right after the overlord, you go up to 16, you make two drones, one of those drones, you rally to the mineral line, and then the other one you rally to go make your spawning pool, uh, and then you make the 17th drone at the same time. So we'll go ahead, yep, make the spawning pool. Then we make a drone after that, which is going to go to our hatchery. And our 18th drone, which will go to our gas. Even though this drone will finish and you'll have some money, you want to wait until you actually have your hatchery down. Then you can go ahead and make your gas. Once your gas is down, you're going to make two more drones. One drone is going to go to your roach warren spot. The other drone is going to go into gas. Okay, and then a couple things happen here. I just want to make sure we catch it. So the Roach Horn goes down as soon as we can. We're also going to make a single pair of Zerglings. So just one. And then we're going to bank some minerals so we can make a queen. Now, depending on what the Terran does, we'll actually change up what we do here. We're going to make two more drones, Supply Block at 22 to go into gas, and then an Overlord after that. Um, this game, so I'm going to do a lot of pausing because there's a lot of things happening simultaneously. I want to make sure that you guys don't miss anything. This game, uh, Dolan does a really good job keeping track of my Zerglings. If the Terran doesn't scout you, or if they don't react, so you want to be, when, when your Lings pop, you want to be looking at this Overlord and seeing what they're doing with the Reaper. Okay, so Dolan's micro is very good. He's going to actually come up, he's going to kill these Lings. If, typically though, if your opponent sends the Reaper across the map, what you want to do is send your Zerglings out in a way that's going to avoid the Reaper. So it, like a shorthand of this is send your zerglings to the third and then to your to the natural here and your goal with these two lings is either a to keep the terran's reaper at home so that they don't scout anything and they don't get any like further damage or anything like that done you're pretty safe back at home with the queen the queen will finish before the the reaper gets there 
Um, but in the best case scenario, you can actually go in and attack this SCV and delay their command center with, with just the price of, of two Zerglings, which is really, really great. Okay, so once our queen is done, and I'm a little bit late getting the overlord because I'm focusing on this here. It's not the hugest deal because we need to wait for this hatchery to finish anyways. So it's actually not too horrible if you forget that. Um, but you should just do your best to not. As soon as this hatch finishes, you're going to make three roaches. And then you're going to make two queens. So one queen in the main, one queen in the natural. And then an overlord. You can still, I'm still, or you can see rather, I'm still trying to micro these, these lings a little bit. Um, so I'm kind of making some mistakes still. But you can see, here we go. We got a queen in, at the natural, queen in the main, and we have our three roaches. So I try to send my ling across the map here. I'm going to pause it because there's lots of different things going on. I try to send these links, this ling across the map, maybe to try to delay that for a little bit. But he did a good enough job uh, delaying me that I'm not going to really get anything done with this circling. So if you notice that the reaper is at home... Uh, you're, you should just leave your Zerglings over at their third. Don't run them in. Don't lose them for free. Then once he sends the Reaper out or he's pulled it back in or whatever he's doing, you can put one in front of here and then one at their third base just to kind of get some extra scouting. Now, the three Roaches. So again, we made three Roaches, two Queens, and then an Overlord, and then we want to start droning our natural. So we got drones on the way. Typically, you want to group up your Roaches here. I didn't do a fantastic job of doing that. And send them across the map. We're just trying to get whatever, basically whatever damage done that we can. The absolute best thing we could do is kill this Reaper. If you can kill this Reaper, that means that Terran's going to have a very hard time scouting your follow-ups for the rest of the game. Um, they're going to have to expend scans or maybe fly in Vikings or Banshees in order to do so. Um, one other thing I wanted to note, because I just, I just see it here. The Queen's just popped. As soon as the Queen's are done, you want to make a layer. My Queen's, again, were a little bit late this game. Um, so this layer should be started just a touch earlier, but you want to make a layer as soon as this queen sun should line up really nicely with your gas. You can see it didn't for me because, again, I'm making I'm making some mistakes this game. That's okay. The three roaches, though, they go across the map. Basically, they're just going to try to prevent mining here. If there's any SCVs or mules, we'll go ahead and kill those. Um, I won't make uh, I won't make roaches if they have a bunker here and it's nicely positioned. You can see there's a bunker here. We're just going to go back across the map. Uh, is what I, is what I should do. I don't know if I actually do that, but that's what we should do, because basically we've caused enough damage. He's lifted his orbital. We're just delaying him as much as we can. Let's look back at what's going on here. I put these gases down at 3:30. Uh, one way that you can remember that is it's going to be roughly the time that your roaches reach this side of the map. Hey, you want to put down for subscribing those two to the gases. Goblin Kings Twitch channel. You done did it. Okay, so two gases go down. Our layer's on the way. We're just droning. We want to try to fill these gases ASAP. And as soon as the layer is done, we're going to want to take a spire. So this is one of these divergent paths or branches, as I like to call it, in uh, the three roach. Um, you can actually go for a lot of different things here. You could just try to go for roach speed in 1-1. One, one. I would probably recommend you start 1-1 one, one a bit earlier because you want it to time up nicely. I like to follow up with mutas. At the same time, so we've got the spire started, we want to rally back our main to our mineral line here and put a gas down. So we want to go up to four gases and just do the best that we can to um, drone up now. We want two base saturation completely. Four gases filled, 16 out of 16 on both mineral lines. And we want to put the we want to put a third base down. So third base over here. Um, we have a question. Why why the spire placement? So I like to, with that first queen that we made, after we inject and we get our other two queens out, we, we want to use that to put creep tumors down. I usually put my first creep tumor in the main in case the reaper is running around and trying to do some shenanigans. And then I'll put a creep tumor over here. But a secondary advantage here is I like to put my spire like over here at the edge of the creep or over here between the bases. Anywhere where you think Terran's not going to scan. The reason for this is because... We're only going to make one wave of mutas. We're going to make, like, preferably we're going to make eight. Who knows if we will be able to get that many. You'll, you'll just have to, again, the, the crisper your macro is, the more that you can get. But anywhere above six. Six to eight is what we're gunning for. But after we're done with that, we're really not going to make mutas ever again. So I like to put it here. It is a bit more in danger. This is an easier spot to hide it. Um, it's not the end of the world if it does get scanned. You don't have to stop making mutas or something like that. 
but it, there's no reason that we should be putting this in a spot that's going to be easily scouted. It's a personal preference, honestly. You, you can go for um, putting that wherever the heck you want to, uh, but that's where I like to put the Spire. So again, we rally our, our main back to our mineral line. We should be doing that. I think I just manually, yeah, I manually pick those drones up. And we want to just get our full saturation here. And we should be putting a third base down. After the Spire finishes, so our first Overlord that we had in the game, right, went to the natural and scouted it. Our second Overlord, I usually scout for proxies, and then I'll send it behind their main. Uh, and then once I have enough gas after our Spire is done, I make an Overseer to try to do my best to scout. This is where there's a lot of different things that can happen and the game can change quite a bit, depending on what you scout. So this scout is really important. Um, you can see he already has a, va a Viking, which is not great for me. I usually like to try to scout behind the mineral line. Um, I do have... He, he kills the changeling, unfortunately. I should have tried to run it out a little faster. But let's see what I scouted and let's see what I like to do. So there's not a whole lot of information here. Um, I can see that this is probably, it looks like a 2-1-1 at least, but I don't know if he has a fast third, and I don't know uh, technically if there is a starport barracks, or sorry, a starport uh, with a tech lab. Uh, that's th Those are like the two things that we're, we're really concerned with, all right? There's there's the third base, fast third base, so if, there, if you scout in, there's a third. If there's a starport and it has a tech lab on it, and then, obviously, if you see a fusion core or if you see an armory, those things can also be really good indicators as to what they're going to do. Um, and I'll briefly go over the ways that I like to respond to all of those things. We're going to look at those games. I have a few replays where I scout them and I change what I'm going to do. So if you scout a 2 one so that's two barracks, one factory, one starport with a reactor, or you see a whole bunch of marines or something like that, probably like 10, or 50, like 10 to 12 at that point, what you want to do is you can keep the spire going, but you need to go up to 12 roaches. So it's actually going to be nine roaches and three ravagers and then three queens uh, with a third base on the way. The reason why we want to do that is because they're going to hit you with two medevac, 16 marines. They're going to drop you. And if we make our mutas, the timing is going to work out that the mutas will be just about to finish as they're dropping you with those 16 marines. If they're really crisp about it, they can even hit you quite a bit sooner, depending on how the early game went for them. So if you don't have defensive units, you will just die. If you scout a fast third base, I usually always will go for the Mutalisks. Um, if you see anything else, if you see Tech Lab, Starport, uh, and no Fusion Core, you can go for Mutas. If you see the fast third base, you can go for Mutas. If you see multiple factories, you can go for Mutas if you want to. Um, the second kind of big game changer is if we see a Fusion Core. If we see a Fusion Core, instead of Mutas, we'll go for Corruptors. Um, that's just to basically instantly counter their build and give you a lot of space, give you a lot of room to go into then whatever you want to do afterwards. My typical follow-up is still Roaches, but it just depends. So this game, I scouted a 2-1-1. I will say that I don't play this the safest because if I just scouted this nowadays, I probably would have made those Roaches just to be safe. If you do scout a 2-1-1 with no fast third and you make those roaches and ravagers and queens, you can always make mutas afterwards. Chances are you're only really going to be able to get up to six at that point, but it's it's that's still just fine. So at the moment here, I'm actually just waiting for my spire to finish so that I can make mutas. It looks like I should be able to make eight here, which is a really good number. Uh, I am banking some minerals, which is not fantastic, but it is what it is. Third base is on the way, and I'm supply blocked at 76. So if I wasn't supply blocked, I would have been able to make eight. But uh, what are you going to do? As soon as you make the mutas that you're going to make, so apparently in this game I decided, hey, six is enough. That's just what we're going to do. Go, go, go. Uh, you want to make roach speed and get double evo chambers. So you're going to go for one, one now as quickly as you can while droning up your third at the same time. So as soon as you've got those two buildings down, you can start droning up. You can even go, if you're banking money, it's not a bad idea to go for those Evo Chambers a little bit earlier. So you can see, if we had our Spire over here, he actually would not have any indication. And he still doesn't. Look at how cheeky that spot is. Two scans, like this is actually exactly why, right? Two scans, and the Spire is nestled right in between them. Just skirting the edge. So, like, you know, and that's still relatively safe. And that's all because we have a Creep Tumor in the main. So that's why I like to do those kinds of things. This is actually a really good case in point. 
So sometimes they'll skip missile turrets if they don't see anything scary. So in this case, uh, in this case, he did. So what are our objective with these mutas? I always deal them into the mineral line. Um, and if they don't have a missile turret, that's big jackpot. We're that that's amazing, fantastic. We get to get as many uh, SCBs as we can. My micro here. I put, this game was actually played quite a while ago. My muta micro has increased a little bit, uh, but you can see that even with some not not really great micro, we're able to get uh, a decent amount of SCBs. We get seven there, which is pretty nice. And now we still have these mutas available to just pressure the map. Behind this, what are we doing? So we're trying to go around. Your primary concern with these mutalisks, okay? The, the 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 most important thing, even if you think you can get like an additional five mutas or sorry, five SCVs, whatever it is. Um, we need to keep these mutas alive. They have to live. Because the second that they die, Terran knows that you just lost a huge investment and you probably don't have anything on the ground or they probably have more than you. So you need to give them a reason to keep them on this side of the map, which is our mutalists. So as you're, when, you're, when you're getting better or you're practicing mutalisk micro, the thing that's gotten um, that's helped me out quite a bit is I will run in, I'll try to do whatever damage I'm going to do, and then I'll click very far away. I'll click, like, over here. And once I know that they're safe, I'll go back, I'll do my macro, right? Because we still need to macro. Uh, at this point of the game, we're going to be banking a ton of money, um, and we're going to have to spend that into drones first, then overlords, and then just try to slam roaches as quickly as we can. If you're overflowing on gas, that's not too big of a deal because we can just turn all of that into ravagers later on. The more siege tanks they have, the better ravagers are. The less that they have, kind of the less good ravagers are. Now, you can see I'm focusing a little too hard on my micro because I don't have one one started. Typically, as soon as these are done, this is probably much, this is actually much more important than what I'm doing over here. Uh, we need to be working towards that next timing, which is plus one missile, plus one carapace. So, hopefully I start that soon. Our roach speed is done, and we pick up a fourth base as well. If you've got the money to do so, go for it. And we're just trying to drone up our third a little bit too fast on the gases here this game, but uh, I guess that's just I guess that's just how it is. I'm not a perfect player, and definitely the pressure was on playing against someone that was so much higher MMR than I was. I was feeling probably a little bit nervous, but we got 12 SCVs there. We still have four mutas, which is hey, that's not that bad when you started with uh, six. So I'm pretty happy with that. But again, my general rule is after that first wave is done, you never make any more mutas. Okay? So I'm fully saturated here, and now we're just making overlords and we're making roaches. And we just want to make as many roaches as we can until 1-1 one, one is finished. We want to hit with 1-1 one, one as soon as it's done. We want to be attacking them. Um, because that's going to be just a giant power spike for us. You can see we're going to have 1-1. One, one. He has 2-2 two, two already. Um, but we, sh we, we should be able to attack for at least a little while before his 2-2 two, two is done. So, again, Dolan, arguably much better player than I am. Uh, but, you know, hey, the, the, the three roach got us in value. Still hasn't made a missile turret in this uh, mineral mineral line, which you'll you'll find that a lot of the times, actually. If, if you notice they're making a missile turret and you kill the SCV making it, then you kill the missile turret, they don't always restart it. So that, that can be pretty nice. A couple extra SCVs picked up there. Okay, so I have a bunch of Ravagers. I have a bunch of Roaches. Uh, we've stopped our droning on 66, which is three base full saturation. I'm probably making a little bit too many Ravagers here. Um, and then I go back in with Mutas, try to get some damage done. But again, I'm just trying to get as much as I can. I'm maxed out 200 out of 200. But my 1-1 one, one is very, very far behind. So I, I, I really delayed starting that. Usually I'll get up to like 170, 180. <clears throat> okay. Now, a couple things I want to point out. 1-1's one, about to finish. My plan at this point is to now go across the map and just try to kill this guy, whoever it is. Um, if they attack you at the same time, the best thing to do is to just peel off a few of your roaches, however many you need to defend this. Um, it's really not that great to do your entire army, which, spoiler alert, is what I'll be doing here in a second. And then as you're moving across the map, this is where you can follow it up with the second branch of what you want to do during the three roach i have been liking um if they're playing bio especially if they're playing really really heavy bio so if you if you scout them and you see geez louise this guy is just slamming barracks barracks is barracks and that's it he's got a single factory so he's not gonna he's sorry two factories 
So he shouldn't he shouldn't have too many siege tanks. He's not going to have something like 15. I like to go for Hydra and Infestation Pit at the same time. Start a hive and then go hey, for a lurker. Guy is a of so John lurkers have Galvatar been my typical follow-up to to uh, just roaches in general. It's very solid. It's very strong. Another follow-up you can go though uh, is you go for plus one air attack, and you remax again with Roach Ravager Corruptor on two two. No matter which one you do, you probably want to be going two two. You can go for Lings, you can go for Banes at this point. Keep in mind, I have yet to get Metabolic Boost. That's not an upgrade that I have. I, only one I have so far is Roach Speed. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and speed this up a little bit. So I got my Hydrogen down, my Infestation Pit. I do the thing that I said you shouldn't do, which is pull all your army to defend that. Uh, that's just not very good, because now he has enough time to set up his Deech Tanks wherever he wants to. And you can see here, we fall into the trap that many Zerg players do, which is walking into a siege tank line, uh, into a tiny choke uh, with, with all of our expensive units. However, I mean, I'm just going to say, we actually still kill that, which is kind of nuts. Um, so we, we literally killed almost all of his bio and so many of his siege tanks there. If I had taken this this fight maybe 10 15 percent better i think the game would probably have been over at this point um just because he's not going to have enough to to defend um if we had come up from this location as well and got a kind of surround on his siege tanks immediately that also would have been pretty huge but regardless this is a good this is a very decent spot for us I, i'm not going to complain about this at all or rather too much we remade a whole bunch of roaches here I don't remember. Okay, I think I am going to just try and go in again. Uh, but I believe that his siege tank placement's a little too good. So let's see how this goes. Yeah, he actually he actually kills off those Ravagers really fast. And I actually can't get to these siege tanks so quickly. I still just kind of roach hammer my way in. Uh, which I don't recommend, guys. Like, this is not the way you should be fighting. This is not how you should do it. But let's take a look at what I'm doing back at home, right? I said I said uh, basically what we wanted to do, but let's see it in action. We made a hive during all this. We made a lurker den, and we've started joining up our fourth base. So at minimum, you want to have a fourth base going up when you walk across the map. Um, preferably, you'll have it sooner. You should be able to put a, a fourth base down while you're making brooches, and we have 2-2 two, two on the way. So let's go back here. Um, yeah, very good siege tank position. I, at this point, really am not able to do too much. I lose a whole bunch of my roaches, but, uh, that's just how it is. You should probably have started, uh, Hydra upgrades by this point. I, for some reason, did not do that, but you should, you should start those. We do start our Lurker Den upgrades, and we start making a ton of Hydras. If you, if you want to predominantly play roaches, and you don't really want to go Hydras, maybe they don't have all that many Metavacs. Or something like that uh, and this guy really he doesn't he only has uh, he only has a few he only has four he's gonna go up to six now then you don't necessarily have to make hydro upgrades if you just want to make lurkers another thing that can be really nice if your opponent is playing well with their siege tanks you'll have a hive anyway so you might as well go for vipers vipers are extremely strong uh, especially when used well with your lurkers you should also try to start your 3-3 as soon as you can um, but yeah, you can see that we're a little bit low on gas, which is another big reason why having your fourth base up is a really good idea. So he gets my third, which is not fantastic, but we do have this base up, so it's not too big of a deal. Not extremely concerned with that. And as soon as I get close to a max out that I'm comfortable with, we have roaches, we have hydras, we have lurkers. We really only want the hydras in case, you know, he has way too many medevacs. Uh, and I also have both Lurker Den upgrades, which is pretty, pretty huge. Now, again, he's pulling me back and forth here. This is a, this is the trademark thing that Terrans do, right? They, they pull your army around. Uh, and you can see he puts me in a really, really bad position here. He kills all my, uh, all my drones in this location. Uh, but he's pushed forward quite, quite heavily with his siege tanks. He doesn't use a scan or he doesn't have a scan yet. Um, he does start getting some of these lurkers, but even with the scan, even with the siege tank, we're able to clear up quite a bit of that. And we just we just hit that lurker button and we go full send on these hydras to go to lurkers. I feel like I'm all in at this point. I have yeah zero drones, so we have to win now. 
Um, or, or the game is just over, right? So we might as well give it our best shot. We might as well try. We have some extremely efficient units. So screw it. Let's go. Let's give it a shot, right? I got, I got enough energy on Vipers to do a couple of pulls, a couple of clouds. That's all we really need, right? We got roaches. We got hydras. We got lurkers. Hey, everything. Everybody's here. I sincerely recommend you guys not try to push from the angle that I'm about to push into, uh, because apparently I didn't learn my lesson the first time. So, yeah, don't do what I'm doing. Okay, go from this angle. It's much better. I'm hemorrhaging lurkers for <laughs> no reason. But we do get some good yoinks here. So a couple of those siege tanks do go down. And you can see in a second, it's like, again, it just it seems like it's the absolute worst thing that, that Zerg could do here. But his, his marines are, are very, very low HP. Uh, so we decide to just YOLO, full send. Once again, I don't recommend this. I'm not telling you to do it. But in this game, it works out. So, hey, maybe there's something to it. Spoiler alert. No, there's not. There's nothing to that. Don't, don't do it. But uh, we still have a lot of lurkers alive. So that's going to be basically it. He GG's out here in just a little bit. Uh, he only has a few ghosts now. Ghosts do not one-shot with snipe on lurkers. So not too big of a deal. And he's just got no production going. He hasn't started making anything during all of this. No siege tanks, nothing like that. One or two siege tanks may be able to save him here. But uh, we get the GG, and he taps out. So again, it's a sloppy game. It's not my best application of the three roach, but I wanted to show you guys that this can be an extremely strong build, even if you're not playing at your absolute best. Even if you're playing someone who is much, much better than you, this can still be a, a very, very strong build. Um, we kind of lucked out that he didn't scan here super quickly and he lost quite a lot of his siege tanks and his bio um, which made it so that when we pushed in we were able to actually still win if he had like two siege tanks up here this whole time i think we would have lost like i don't think there would have been a chance unless i pulled them down as well but yeah so that is what i would what i would call a standard type of three roach game again very sloppy but the the overall sort of key key points of the game are the same we went for the early ling, the early pair of lings rather than the three roaches. Then we went for the fast spire two base muta play. After that, we followed up with joining our third. Went for a run one a one one roach ravager push. And then followed that up with fourth base and went to hydra lurker viper, which is an extremely extremely efficient composition versus Terran especially. It's extremely hard for Terran to uh, play against it, even if you're not the best player in the world. Uh, so yeah, that is that is that replay. Um, I have a few more that I do want to show you guys. And on these ones, I'm not going to look at the early game or the middle of the game because they are basically exactly the same. But we can look at um, a few different things. Okay, so this is a game where we play the three roach and we play versus a proxy rax. Uh, this guy plays a little bit strangely. But I don't even do very well against this, and we still hold it what I would consider with ease. So, again, the early game is going to be exactly the same, but you'll, I'll show you the point where it changes. Um, he's sending out an early SCV. He's going for kind of a meme, uh, but it ends up working because Blackburn, I don't send my Overlord to my third. I send it out to over here. Because typically when I get proxy racks, it's over here. So he actually is going to finish this barracks, and I have no idea that it's coming. Everything else about this game is the same. We have the spawning pool, the roach worm extractor, everything else is going just fine. And he also makes a barracks over here. Why he's doing it there, I'm not quite sure, but whatever. So we keep going forward. So let's look at my vision here. I see that it's a proxy rack. What do we do? Well, number one, we've already made the two links. So there's, there's a few things that are going through my mind right now. We've already made the two links. Send them out. We're gonna we're gonna do our best. Two Zerglings on Microd, kill a Marine. Just just kill a Marine. It is crazy hard for Terran to actually kill two Zerglings with a single Marine. So we can try to delay that barracks. We can try to kill the first Marines that come out. Send them out. Send them out. Go do something with them. The second thing we're gonna do, and it was a little quick there, is we put a second extractor down. Ultimately, what I want to get to is Ravagers. Okay, I ultimately only want to get to Ravagers. So we're gonna keep the Queen. Go for an inject. You can go for a creep tumor. That's also fine. And we have a hatchery as well. Okay. Now when that hatch finishes, I see, wow, he's actually got a lot over here. I still don't know 
that there is a barracks that's sitting right there. Okay, so the barracks is finished. We send our lings across the map. This is not a bad idea either. Um, he does full wall us off with a barracks as well. But you can just pull SCVs and force, force them to repair this. Because if you kill this, that actually halts them pretty hard. So what we ultimately want to get up to is Ravagers. We, we eventually just want to get up to Ravagers. You can lose this base. It's not the end of the world. Um, because you have a lot of power to push back with. Okay, so as soon as our roaches spawn, we want to just spend all of our gas and turn them into Ravagers. So you can kind of stop after you make a few roaches. I think I make five here. Yeah, I have one on the way. My micro is a bit sloppy. Um, you can also try to try to pop down a few of these SCVs. So I lose two roaches there. That is definitely not the best. Um, and we're going to lose this this hatch. That's, that's okay. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, we're actually playing a little sloppy, guys. Like, I, I only have one Ravager left alive. Like, this is, not, this is not good. So, don't be afraid to actually just, like, go across the map. Um, because now, like, what does he have, right? Like, let's, let's take a look at the state of the game. He's got five Marines, which I'm not really afraid of too much. He's got a Barracks that's all the way out here, which is just, what is this even doing? It's not that big of a deal. Um, and I have like roaches and ravagers, so you know what? Heck it, let's just go across the map. Let's put him into a spot where he's he's forced to he's forced to respect the roaches. He either has to win right now. This is a really good demonstration on how strong roaches are. This is what five marines. So five marines lose to two roaches easily. Like it's not even it's actually not even close. It's insane. Now we still want to go for ravagers. And we still have our overlord alive here, which is which is really really awesome. Um, and basically, we just start biling. Yeah, we want to bile down one of these structures. You can try to hit SCVs. That's fine. Uh, as soon as you bust in, don't be afraid to try to run in there and just get get the work done, man. Do your best to micro against SCVs. Now he does finish a tank, so I put my roach ravager in kind of a bit of a compromising position. There's like a full surround of SCVs on my roaches and stuff. But if you do not kill this tank, if you don't think you can kill it, you need to leave. Like, you need to get out of there and try to regroup and then maybe go back in. That's up to you. Uh, but I I felt confident enough that I could kill it. I do kill it. And at minimum, I feel, hey, I'm going to get enough damage done that, um, that all these SCBs are going to die. And, yeah, it should be just fine. So I have one Ravager left. Behind this, I am just making more roaches. I do have a hatchery that's going down. So we have taken a hatch during all this all this commotion, and I have four roaches on the way. Just trying to keep my last Ravager alive, try to keep him from mining for as long as possible. I get the last bile on that factory, and him not having a tech lab and not starting a siege tank here is actually going to be uh, the reason why we win this. He hasn't rewalled off. He hasn't done anything there. I just have four roaches. We go in. We kill everything, and there's just absolutely nothing that he can do. He's going to make Marines. He's got no SCVs. It's just it's over at this point. Um, so this is a little bit of a strange one, but it was a strange one where it actually worked out for him, where he kills our hatchery. But in general, you can just try to go for Ravagers, and I highly recommend don't be afraid to just walk across the map and try to kill your opponent because nine times out of ten, you could probably do it. If they go for a traditional Proxy 3 racks where they're going for bunkers down here, you respond basically exactly the same. Um, you just go for a second gas. You go for the Ravagers. If they get your hatchery, it's not that big of a deal. You have such a strong counterattack on the way that um, it's oftentimes worth it to lose the hatchery, but then go across the map and kill them. Okay, so that is how I like to play the three roach opener versus proxy racks cheese. So this should be the right replay. Let's find out. This is how I like to play three roach versus battle cruiser and i believe this guy goes into mech as a follow-up here um i'm gonna fast forward the game once it loads up here and we'll just take a look at ever again the, the beginning of the game it's it doesn't really matter the better you do the i mean the better the game is going to be for you but um in general i'm just gonna i'm gonna skip to where we have the overseer and we do that scout because that's one of the crucial points where you can change up a lot of different things Okay, so we are just about to do our Overseer Scout and see what the Terran is up to. We actually had a very good early game here where our first two Lings uh, delayed his command center and got some damage done. We killed a total of three SCVs, 
And I believe we still have our roaches back at home. We have one roach that's a little low HP, but that's okay. Everything else pretty much the same. Third base is on the way. Fully saturated. Two bases. We're going for that second gas in the main. But now we're scouting. Let's see what I see. And hopefully I look at my camera. Okay, yep. Spread and creep. Good job. Look at the, look at the overseer, A-pop. Come on, buddy. Don't move the roach. Why do I not look at this? What the hell? What am I doing? What do I what do I see? Okay. Well, apparently. Oh, I think this game we go mutas. Yeah, I do. Okay. So he. This is okay. So this is actually a very interesting game here. So I did a really poor job looking at my scout. Um, it's a very important scout to look at, guys. Make sure you do. And I didn't send it to the mineral line first. All I saw was the tech lab starport. And so I felt comfortable. Hey, let's make our mutas. Uh, we should we should be putting some spores down, but that's about it. And yeah, at that point, I feel comfortable. I didn't see a fusion core, so I don't think that this is battle cruiser. So you can see, even if you miss the fusion core scout, you can go mutas and it's okay. It's not as good as going corruptors. I will be very honest with you. Going corruptors just absolutely shuts this stuff down. But the mutas can still do some work for you. So let's kind of take a look and see how I play this one out. Our mutas go in. I'm not doing a very good job paying attention to them. That's okay. He does not have an engineering bay though, so that's okay. I do not want to fight his battle cruiser over his SCVs. So his SCVs could just repair and take an infinitely long fight against my mutas until I lose them all. Um, basically now what these mutas are going to be good for is poking in, trying to distract him, and trying to keep his battle cruiser from going across the map. I do go for five follow-up corruptors. In case he's going for more battle cruisers behind this, I'm not sure. It's just a safe number. It's not too big of a deal. Um, I actually take some damage there from those Hellions. A little bit out of position, probably trying to attack with my mutas here. I don't, again, I don't necessarily recommend doing what I'm doing here. I'm kind of just losing these mutas for nothing. It's really not really all that great. Corruptors, corruptors are quite a bit better. Um, at killing BCs. If this Muta had teleported to my base, let's say, uh, that would be another story. But and, and I would probably feel comfortable to fight it with the Mutas. In the other way, he probably he probably should have just teleported it out. I'm not really sure why he didn't do that. Okay, so um, we can almost just pretend I didn't make those Mutas. If you guys want to want to think about how this game would be, maybe for you. If you scout the fusion core, you just want to go straight to corruptors. You can go for five, six, depends on how many you think they're going to make. And you can see as well how I like to play against slow mech. So this is going to be someone who follows this up with siege tanks and Thors and just tries to turtle on as many bases as they can. This is one of the ways that you can stop them. Um, I don't oftentimes, if I'm going to go heavily into the corruptors and mutas, I don't often like to go for the uh swarm host response because it's a little bit too expensive we'll just go for like roach ravager so you can see we kind of just bust in with a decent amount of roach ravager we hit with our one one uh we want to keep our corruptors nearby so that we can fight these bcs but in general you can just endlessly now siege this location if you wanted to uh or you could try to just morph what i'm doing here morph in some ravagers go for their siege tanks and try to try to fight them down but now that we have control of right uh, uh, the outside of his base, we can take whatever fights we want, and we can decide to not take fights we don't want. So we have a very, very powerful position here uh, where Terran is just kind of stuck. His base has been lifted. We still have Corruptors in case we wanted to just bile on these, which is also a really good thing to do. But yeah, basically, I just have so many Roaches. I have Corruptors still available, so he's not going to be able to do anything with his battle cruisers. And we're just going to start endlessly sieging this location. I do have an Infestation Pit on the way in case I did decide to go for Swarm Host this game. Didn't come down to it. We're just in such a good position. Um, and we're almost over 100 supply ahead of him. So that is one way to deal with battle cruisers. That's actually kind of an... Uh, I'm showing you guys almost like awkward games um, instead of like the perfect... Oh, I scouted it. I did this. Basically, if you scout the fusion core, all you got to do is make like five corruptors wait in your base. And as soon as it teleports or it walks in, you just attack it and you will never have another issue with, with BC openers. 
especially if you play three roach. I think that the three roach is set up in a perfect position to just completely shut down battle cruiser opener builds. Um, as well as I think they're in a really good spot to take care of mech, which is going to be the next game I'll show you guys. I'll just show you a pure uh, versus mech game. Okay, so in this game, we'll do the same thing. I'll fast forward to the spot where we get the Overseer Scout in, and I'll show you guys what I see and what I like to try to go for. Okay, so we're at about 418, 420, and we are scouting with our Overseer. Let's take a look at what I see and how I like to respond to that. So we'll speed it up just a little bit. We'll take my camera. Okay, so we see... A bunch of factories being built and a tech lab here. This barracks is probably not going to make anything with that tech lab. It's just making tech labs for these factories to go on to. Um, yeah, so I see that there. So three factories. I see a few marines, which were probably a result of the early game. Some hellions drive by and a siege tank. Now, let's take a look at what I did. I canceled my spire and I made an infestation pit instead. So... This is up to you guys. You can absolutely do like I did last game, which is just make mutas and go for the 1-1 one, one Roche timing attack. That can work perfectly well against these types of situations. But again, I like these kind of builds because they're pretty adaptable. You do take a little bit of efficiency loss by canceling that Spire, of course. But it allows you to play maybe a different type of game. I am a big fan of Swarm Hosts. I think that they're amazing and I love playing them versus mech. Typically, I will only play them against slow mech. Battle mech is not really what I want to play Swarm Host against. And I felt with my scouting, I felt confidence enough. I saw a siege tank, I saw some hellions, I saw no cyclones. So I felt confident, okay, this guy's going slow mech. Um, I can go ahead and make Swarm Host here. You'll see that I was actually wrong. And he does go for battle mech, but he goes for lots of siege tanks behind it as well. So it's not just pure battle mech. So we're not in too bad of a spot. So, what do we change here? So we've canceled our Spire. We're droning up our natural, and our third base is on the way. I typically will make, while the infestation pit is on the way, a few extra roaches. Five, four, I would say three to five extras. Because typically they're going to send out these Hellions. Though I only want to go for plus one missile, I'll also make a double Evo in the wall. So that we can have a much easier time blocking off those Hellions from getting to our drones. Our third base is on the way, and we're basically just defending against Hellions here while we're droning up our third. It's still very important. You want to reach 66 drone saturation before you start making Swarm Host, if you can help it. Um, yeah, we're doing a pretty good job here. He does get a few of my drones. Not the biggest deal in the world, but uh, but yeah, it definitely could have been a little cleaner by me. On his side of the map, you can see he is now going for Cyclones, but he's not going them for them in any sort of super aggressive fashion he's not making a ton of them quite yet um he's actually kind of making a whole bunch of different ones so when you start making swarm host i like to put a night down at the same time um i'm having a hard time spending my money because swarm hosts are again surprisingly expensive for your supply there are three supply east so you really really should just slam those overlords again i'm not a perfect player i'm trying to do a lot of different things um and i'm making mistakes and that happens so the second I see that there are Cyclones, I kind of have a, like, oh no, this is not what I want to do moment. Um, in these situations, <clears throat> let's say you find yourself playing Swarm Host and, whoops, they actually did go Battle Mech. What the heck do we do here? Immediately start getting Lotus, or sorry, Locust Waves. Locust Waves going. If you can push Battle Mech back to their side, then you can, you can play Swarm Host with it no problem. The reason why Battle Mech can be a really good counter to Swarm Host, though, is because of how quick they are and how long it takes you to actually get a ground force that can both combat their Battle Mech force and be able to, to drop Locust Waves. So start uh, start Nidusing, start hitting those Locust Waves immediately, as soon as you see that it's Cyclones. Um, so you can see that we're doing that here. I have gone up to... I have two more Swarm Hosts on the way. So we're going to go up to a total of nine, and I've switched back into producing roaches. I like to deal with battle mech by just going pure roach uh, and trying to focus fire down cyclones. Okay, so we start the locusts. They're going out here, and we're starting to kill SCVs. Great. This is fine. Um, basically, whatever stops their momentum on your side of the map. As soon as I'm happy with the number of swarm hosts that I've made, 
I will start just slamming as hard as possible into roaches. Um, with you on a three base economy, you are able to make a ton of roaches. You can see my spending is absolutely terrible this game. We have had some spending issues since I started making swarm hosts. They're extremely supply inefficient. Make sure you guys slam overlords. Don't be like me. Don't, don't float all this kind of money. Uh, but I feel very comfortable in the position we're in. Even if I don't have a, a whole lot of supply at the moment, I'm only at 138. I still feel like, hey, I have roaches here. I have locust waves that are going in one after another. We're getting some decent value. We get those hell bats killed. We're getting mules. We're getting supply depots. And we're forcing him back and forth here. As well as he's not pushing our side of the map. Um, I only notice a few siege tanks here. So we go for Roach Ravager. Again, taking kind of some inefficient trades, but we also clean up all of those Cyclones, which is great. And yeah, we can see that we're kind of just pulling our opponent apart here. We haven't yet to spend all of this float that we have. Our supply is still capped out at 154, but we're just sort of constantly attacking. And I think our next one that we're going to do, we're going to go for a Locust Wave and Roach Ravager combination attack. Uh, which is, as you can see, against slow mech especially, which is basically what this guy is now. He only has siege tanks and hellions. Uh, is extremely strong. No, there's Twitch channel. So you want to make sure Twitch that if channel. you are playing oh, versus hellbats, right? You want to control chat. click your locusts and actually send them over top of the hellbats so that they can focus fire down the siege tanks. It's a very, very slight micro maneuver here. I'm confident that you guys can do it. It's not too hard, but it will make your Locust Wave way more effective. Um, and as it lands, feel free, go in with your other Roaches here. You'll just have so much, so many Locusts tanking for you uh, that your Roach Ravager can get everything else done that you want. And you can see that our opponent isn't able to hang on, and he GG's out. Now... I have a rule versus mech when I do when I do play Swarm Host, and that is I can never let them get to a fourth base. If they're able to hold on onto three bases and get a fourth up and start moving SCVs over there and re like remaking workers and things like that, we're in a really bad spot. Um, basically, mech once they're on four bases, they can make so many like siege tanks, hellions, hellvats that your locusts start to become a lot more ineffective. Uh, they can do things like go for a maybe a Banshee switch, maybe a Battle Cruiser switch. So we really, really want to try to kill them when they're still on three bases. Uh, that's kind of a really big deal when you play Swarm Host. But I feel confident you guys can do it. This, again, was not the cleanest application of going Road Travager Swarm Host. But you can see, even still, we were able to take some extremely good trades, keep them on the back foot, and yeah, win the game overall. I think that's pretty much all the styles of Roach Ravager that I want to show you guys. Uh, those are all the different branches that I like to go. If you have a, uni a unique way that you like to play the three Roach, I would love to hear about it. You can comment down below. Make sure to check me out live on Twitch. I'm streaming there probably right now over at twitch.tv slash apoptosis808. I would love to see you guys there. Thanks. Fantastic. Cut. Wrap. Send it.